I'm here with Silas W. Allard, the author of Christianity and Migration, and he's here to answer a few questions regarding his book. First of all, what is the book about and why did you write it? Yeah, so we wrote this book because we wanted to create a conversation between scholars of law and scholars of theology on the questions of migration. So the book is really a dialogue between law and theology around the central migration, uh, the central questions of migration policy. And I mean that both metaphorically and literally. Uh, so metaphorically, we have uh, chapters in the book that are dedicated to questions of law and we have chapters dedicated to questions of theology and so there is this back and forth between the two disciplines around the central questions of migration policy and literally we have five chapters in the book as well that are co-authored by a scholar of law and a scholar of theology around central issues in the study of migration so there's a, a literal dialogue or conversation going on in those chapters. And thinking of it kind of as a Venn diagram, what would you say are the main differences between the two and the main links between the two disciplines, law and religion in relation to migration? Sure. So I think that the point, certainly the point of contact between the two is questions of justice and fairness and the power of the state. Um, so to what what powers does the state have over immigrants? Uh, powers of admission or deportation or exclusion. Um, and, but I think that where the two disciplines diverge is the ways that they come to these questions of justice, fairness, and the power of the state. So I think that many theologians approach this question from a deeply normative perspective. Uh, so they're asking about what is right what is good, what kinds of values, drawing on the resources of the tradition, scripture, uh, experience, uh, traditions of welcome uh, or exclusion in the past. They bring these resources to ask, what are the goods, what are the values, what is right in this situation? But they're not always paying attention to the structures and the institutions of law that put constraints and limitations on what is possible. And legal scholars, also interested in questions of justice and fairness with regards to the migrant, but they are deeply invested uh, in asking questions about the institutions and the structures of law that constrain and limit what is possible, even as they work to reform or work against those structures and institutions in many cases. And so it's helpful, I think, for scholars of theology to learn more about the structures of law, but also for scholars of law to be liberated in a certain way from the particularities of the law to ask the more fundamental questions about goods and values and what is right. So who is the main audience for your book and what might non-specialists find interesting about this book? Yeah, absolutely. So I think the main audience is anyone who's interested in questions of migration policy. I think, you know, the, the very particular audience that my co-editors, Kristen Heyer and Raj Nadella and I have in mind is scholars of law and scholars of theology, right? So we want folks who are working in this field to be able to take up this book and use the material that's there, but also to take the conversation that hopefully we've started and continue it in other venues and other forums. I think the book is also aimed at pastors, at lawyers, at advocates and activists who are working in the space of immigration. Uh, who can use both the per very particular ways that our authors are thinking about these things, but also the, ex again, kind of the example of the book to continue conversations between law and theology in their own areas of practice, right? In the churches, in the courtrooms, or in the streets, uh, depending on where people are located. What I think uh, non-specialists will find interesting is the hopefully the way that we've structured the book. Um, I think that there are other issues where this kind of dialogic approach would make a lot of sense. And so even for folks who aren't working on issues of migration, I think that they can hopefully be inspired by the way that we've brought, brought together this interdisciplinary uh, set of contributors and collaborators to have a really um, 
sustained and engaged conversation around a subject that I think when you read the book, you get the sense that both sides are deeply enriched by that engagement. Yeah, so I know you can't tell us much about the book, but <laughs> would you say that the aim is to create more of a dialogue between the two fields or a dialogue with the migrants themselves or mm. a dialogue between the scholars and the rest of the world? Yeah, I mean, I think that the, the thing that the book does very particularly is to create a dialogue between the two fields. Um, so between scholars of law and scholars of theology. But I also don't want to dismiss the other dialogues that you're referring to. I think it, it isn't uh, an inherent part of our book, but that dialogue between scholars and migrants or between uh, receiving communities and migrants or between anyone who's thinking about or who on who's trying to act on behalf of migrants needs to be in a sustained dialogue with migrants themselves. Um, and I think that one of the things our book does is to take as its kind of anchor point the experience of migrants, particularly the ways that the law is currently structured to create suffering in immigrant communities. Um, that is in many ways our starting point, and we want the experience of migrants to be front and center for everything that we're doing in the book. Mm -hmm. And I think that beyond our book, it's important and necessary that the voices of migrants be centered in these conversations so that the experience of migrants can be centered. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, what would you say is your favorite part of the book? Or if not, if you don't have one, mm. I guess, what is a highlight that you want to pinpoint to audiences about the book? Yeah, I mean, I think that my favorite part of the book is the co-authored chapters, because I think that they are incredibly rich. Um, it's really hard work to co-author, um, and it's particularly hard work to co-author with someone who's not in your field, right? Who doesn't share your language, your way of thinking about things, your way of seeing the world. And so I'm really proud of what our contributors were able to achieve in these co-authored chapters. And I do think that they're just, they're really rich uh, in content um, and in the example that they provide. I also want to lift up, we have an, uh, a foreword to the book from the Dean of Vanderbilt School of Theology, Emily Towns, which is just beautiful. It's um, a prose poem um, about displacement and the trauma that displacement generates. And I think it's a great uh, kind of opening frame for the book that again, tries to put that experience of migrant communities front and center as we are thinking about these issues, always trying to keep the experience of migrants at the center of what we're doing. Yeah, that sounds great. So last question, what is the best way for people to access this book? Yeah, so it is, it's available uh, online where you go to buy books, um, <laughs> certainly through the Rutledge website. Uh, Rutledge is the publisher. It's currently available in a hardcover and in a digital format. The digital format is, is much more affordable uh, for folks who are looking to purchase their own copy of the book. Uh, but for those who are associated with universities or other institutions, uh, I strongly encourage those folks to encourage their libraries to get a copy of both the physical book and the digital book to make it available to as many people as possible. Yeah, that sounds great. All right, thank you, Silas, for your time. Um, I'll let you go now, but thank you. Thank you, it's been a pleasure.